Okay, take your Bibles and turn to Revelation chapter 16. We're getting right on along and it's getting more interesting all the time. And uh, we're at the end of the tribulation period when we, on what we'll be studying tonight. But uh, it's, it, it gets really bad, but we're not going to be here. God is in control. That's what I've been trying to tell people to talking about Israel this week, and they, they get, uh, somebody put a real nice thing on Israel today, though, and they, they shared it, and it was a sharing thing, and it was really good. Uh, if you got it, uh, read it, and if you didn't get it, tell somebody to, or ask somebody to send it to you. I always say tell somebody. You don't tell nobody nothing. You ask them. Huh? It depends on who it is. Okay. But, uh, Things are getting interesting. We're in the bowls, the seven bowl judgments. We talked about them. You know, chapter 15 was just an introduction to the bowl judgments. And now those angels are going to start pouring out those bowls very rapid. It happens really fast. And what we're going to be reading tonight is all at the end of the tribulation period. It's, it's getting close to the end now. Uh, and what we're seeing happen now is God has stepped on the scene uh, with this tribulation period. Uh, he's not in a war with the people of Israel. He is in a war with Satan. And this is what happens. And, and people that are following Satan, and you'll see that tonight as we get into this, these uh, things here. It says, uh, verse 1 says, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of wrath of God, the raft of God on the earth is time. Here it goes, is what he's saying. And I want those seven angels we talked about last week that's got those seven bowls, it's time to start pouring them out. And wow, some of the things that, that happen, uh, you can't even imagine what it's gonna be like. Uh, you don't wanna be here, number one, and there's, there's a way not to be here, and that's either you die now or you get carried out into rapture and uh, and go to heaven, and once you do that, uh, it don't matter if it happens today, you won't be here. You know, when the even when the tribulation starts, you will not be here. But we're, we're at the end now. We're at the last three and a half years, and we're at the last probably year or so, maybe at the very end of the tribulation period. And he says, go pour out the bowls of the wrath of God. God's angry. And he's fixing to pour out the raft. And, and we're going to see the people who's, who he's pouring this out on tonight. And some of these things uh, you won't even believe. Uh, this is God's judgment on what's here on earth that is against him and are following Satan and the Antichrist and the false prophet. And these things are going down. Uh, they, there's no downtime between these. You know, it's not like pour out the first bowl and then wait to month or two and pour out the second bowl is boom, 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 boom. It's real fast. It's rapid judgment. And uh, with these, when we get to this period, don't you remember, when we get to this period, uh, about 4 billion people are already dead when you get to the very close to the end of the tribulation. Where, where are we at tonight? There's already been 4 billion people that either got killed or we got carried out into rapture. They're gone, Okay. This is going to be what's going to happen to the ones that's left here. Uh, you have differences of opinions. Um, several people say, you know, you, if you've heard the word of God and you've rejected Christ and you are here during the tribulation period, I've had some to say, you can't be saved. And then I've had some to say, well, you can be saved any time as long as you've got a breath. But what we find out tonight when we look at this, maybe maybe you can be saved, you know, if you, you know, the, way you, the way you get saved is give your heart to Christ. You believe in Jesus. But what? Well, wouldn't the mark of the beast already kill them just like Do what? If they've already taken the mark of the beast, they're saved. Well, that's where I'm, that's where I'm going right now. I'll be at the mark of the beast in a minute. Uh, and you can see something you've probably never seen before, and then you give you something to think about. Uh, but it's not going to happen. You know, we already know that uh, we'll be there in a minute. 
Okay. What I'm talking about now is people that's never heard the word of God and now it's exposed to them and they either accept it or reject it. What I'm saying is people that, like if the rapture happened right now, people that were sitting in churches and said, I'm going to give Christ my heart. No, I'm not either. I'm just going to church just to be going. And then the rapture takes place. If they've rejected the word of Christ and said, I don't want anything to do with it. They've heard the word, it's been presented to them, and they have rejected it. Uh, my opinion is they, they won't be saved during the tribulation period either, you know, because they've already rejected Christ. Uh, these that we see during this tribulation period are the ones that, um, well, mainly it's Jews, okay? The main course is, is this is a time that God is dealing with the Jews. Okay, you got some Gentiles here too, but God's dealing with the Jews. Now, uh, I'm leave right there. Anyway, half the world's population is dead where we're at tonight in the 16th chapter of Revelation. Uh, either they've been raptured out or they have died, you know, during some of these other plagues that we had in chapter 6 and places like that. They're, they're gone, okay? They're not here. But, here comes the bowls. Let's look at this very first bowl. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. This was God, this angel, pouring out God's wrath on these people that had the mark of the beast and followed the false prophet. Okay, and followed the Antichrist. This is poured out on them. What happened to them? Ugly and painful sores. Now, what you're going to find out in this chapter, there's several plagues in these seven bowls that happened almost exactly the same uh, back in the book of Exodus, the ten plagues of Egypt. You know, some of the similar, you know, I'll just put it at, at that way. It's, uh, some of it's similar. But... Uh, this went out on all the ones. See, this is God dealing with right now. This is God dealing with what's left. Uh, the saints have already been saved. They got killed. They didn't take the mark of the beast, and they're gone. Okay? They've already been martyred. We're at a point right now where there's not any of them left. Okay? What is left now is everybody that is against God. Okay? And this is what it tells you right here. The Bible can explain itself better than I can explain it. It said, who had the mark of the beast? And those who worshipped his image. Remember, we talked about them build the image. And here are some that worshipped the image. Maybe they had not took the mark of the beast yet, but they're still, you know, ready to take it. Maybe. But they're worshipping the image. They don't want to worship God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. Now, you're going to find out as we keep going here, uh, just like the second one in verse 3, the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Now, most of the time, and I had told you earlier, you see the word sea in Revelation that's talking about a sea of people. Well, this particular time is talking about the sea, the water, the water sea, Okay. Because when he poured out the plague on it, uh, it became as blood. Did that happen in Exodus also with the river Nile? You know, they changed the water to blood. And it said it was as a dead man. And every living creature in the sea died. I know every one of you has dressed fish before or been around people that dress fish. And it don't take but about two hours of sitting in the sunshine. You don't want to be around that bag that of dressed fish. Can you imagine every living creature in the sea died? And now there's a stench, a smell, an odor. And it gets ugly. But everything died. Verse 4. And then the third angel, I told you they're going to be back to back. And then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. There's your blood again. We, uh, the sea became blood. Now we're looking at the rivers becoming blood. 
Uh, what's the difference there? Um, fresh water compared to salt water. Uh, I, I got some figures here. It says 70% of the earth is covered by water. 70%. You know, it's, the water is bigger than the land mass. Now, 97% of the water that is in earth is salt water. Did you know that? 97%. There's 3% that's got your, your polar ice cap and your glaciers. That's all fresh water. And that's a 3%. But humans, what we consume, what we drink every day, what we use every day, uh, the water that, that we have consists of only 1% of the water's world, uh, the world's population of uh, water. That's 70%. We just use 1%. To drink now can you imagine coming and this being changed to blood and the stench and all and you can't drink it uh, the rivers the springs the fresh water supply and it's all gonna be polluted just that quick okay let's keep going and I heard an angel of the waters saying you are righteous, O Lord, the one who is, who was, and who is to be, because you have judged these things. Now, the angel here is saying, you've got a right to do what you're doing. He's, God, what, what you're doing is righteous. The people are going to think it's not. Uh, but what you're doing is righteous. It's for you. You know, the way they've treated you, the way they've turned against you. So... This is what that angel was saying. He said, for they have shed the blood of prophets. They have shed the blood of saints. He says, and you have given them blood to drink now, uh, for this is their just due. God is pouring out his wrath upon the earth and the people that's left. And I heard another voice from the altar saying, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. And then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun. Like this gets real. This, this was my favorite one. He pours out his bowl on the sun and power was given to him to scorch the earth or to scorch men with fire. Now, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to give you time to get there. Turn over to Isaiah, the 30th chapter. This is a prophecy. Isaiah, the 30th chapter. <coughs> Huh? I'm slower. It's right before Jeremiah. I'll wait for you. Isaiah 30, <laughs> verse 26. Okay? Look at this. Isaiah's prophesying something here. He says, Moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be how many? Sevenfold. Sevenfold. As the light of seven days and in the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their womb. Seven times hotter. Can you imagine the sun being seven times hotter than it is right now? It would definitely be global warming, wouldn't it? It would be what they're talking about, global warming. Uh, great heat. Heat like you've never heard before or never seen before. So sevenfold. Turn up that heat seven times outside. Turn up that sun seven times. What's going to happen? Did you, you remember me talking about the polar ice caps and the, and the glaciers and stuff? They're all going to be melted. What would happen if they melted? Uh, Dr. Henry Morris wrote a book, and he did some calculations in his book, and he said if the sun were seven times hotter than it is right now, that... Uh, the water would rise 200 feet all over the world. 200, 200 feet. But now your global warming people predict that by 20, 2100, I'm not going to be here. Uh, most of y'all are not going to be here by 2100. But if they go on their global warming plan by 2100, uh, the water's going to rise two feet everywhere. Now, what would that do? Just two feet. Uh, if you think about global warming and the water would rise two feet all over the world, it would cause 
200 million people to be flooded over the world. New York City is sitting right now at 33 feet. Rise it two more feet, you know, the water. Now, let's, let's do the, if you want to know about global warming, go to chapter 16 of the book of Revelation and you really learn about global warm, warming in the verse that we're talking about right now because if that happens and the sun's seven times hotter, it's not going to be two feet, it's going to be 200 feet. It's going to be flooded. It's not going to flood the whole world, just people that are at the stages. Uh, take New York City, for instance, 33 feet. You rise the water up 200 feet, they're going to be underwater. Eight and a half million people could be underwater. And then if you take Miami, it's six and a half feet above sea level. Add 200 feet to it. And then go to New Orleans, it's seven feet below sea level. Add 200 feet to it. There won't be any New Orleans either. So you see, the seven times hotter, this is what these people are going to have to go through, is this is going to be seven times hotter than, uh, than they have ever seen before. This is, this is God's judgment on them. This is God what? Now, during this time when these seven vials start, now say somebody, after they get them sores and all then they say, Oh, Lord, I made a mistake. I'm really sorry. I wish I would have believed. I, I believe now. I believe now. It ain't no good, is it? Well, the same question she asked, and I'm getting there. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> y'all getting ahead of me. Y'all slow down just well, a minute. I just wondered if they could I'm giving y'all the bad stuff for it first, and then, I, then I'm going to show you something. How I want long you... can you go before you can change your mind? Well, let me, Okay. Where are we at right now? We're at the fourth angel poured out his bowl, and we talked about the sun. I want to get done with the sun first. Let's go to verse 9. And men were scorched with great heat. You reckon if you turn the sun up seven times, there's no sunscreen going to protect you. They are scorched. It says right here, they are scorched with great heat. And what did they do? Here's your answer right here. They blasphemed the name of God. They blasphemed him who has the power over these plagues. Here's God putting the plagues on these people, and God's the only one that could actually say, okay, I heard your prayer, if you prayed, you know, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. But what did they do? This is how bad the world is at this time, because I told you all the good ones are already gone, but it says that they blasphemed. They even cursed God. The only person they could call on to give them help, and they cursed him. They're still cursing God. You're going to find that in uh, verse 9, 11, and 21. You're going to find out where they blaspheme God. And uh, let's keep going. It says they blaspheme the name of God who has power over these plagues, the only one that could do anything about it. And then instead of praying to him, they're blaspheming his, they're cursing him. He says, and they did not repent, Marie. They did not repent. We're into bad people now. We're not into somebody. Uh, what I was, you're talking about the ones taking the mark of the beast. We're there. That's what I wanted to get to. Even as bad as it got, they're not going to get saved because they keep blaspheming God. They keep cursing God. No. If they've took the mark of the beast, this is who what we started. This, this is who the plagues are poured out on is those people. Now, if and that's a big word, is if, but it's not in my Bible. But if they could, at this time, they got the mark of the beast. Uh, we know that if you got the mark of the beast, you're done. You can't be saved. But if God had just one person in that group to say, "Please forgive me." What's, what would God do then? But the Bible says there's not going to be one there. The Bible says they blaspheme God. They've done it three times. Let's keep reading. And they were scorched Time and... Huh? Time out. Time out? Yeah. You let us go to Isaiah. Now we're back in Revelation. I know we're back in Revelation. Isaiah was 30... You're talking about the moon. 30, 26. And we were talking about 30, the sun getting turned up sevenfold. Now, sentence mean when the Lord binds up his bruises of his people and heals the wounds he inflicted that's the ones that's gone that's the ones that made it through the tribulation they're gone to heaven they are they're in heaven at this particular time 
but it also says there what I wanted you to see in that verse was the sun was going to be right. sevenfold. Okay. Right. Seven times brighter. Hotter too. Yeah. Okay. So, but these people that he's already healed are the ones that have already gone up. They're gone. Okay. They didn't take the mark of the beast. Okay. <laughs> That's where Sandy was at. You know, she wanted to make sure that the mark of the beast, you know, if you take the mark of the beast, you are for Satan and against God. And that's what I'm trying to show you here is how it don't matter how bad it gets. It don't matter how it don't matter what judgments God's pouring out on these people. They are not going to change. All they want to do is curse God. And then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom became full of darkness. What happened in one of the 10 plagues in Egypt? Got dark, didn't it? You know, it's another one of those. And they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. Now, let's stop right here. This is, this is where my next step's gonna go. I want you to hear this. Here they are in total darkness, gnawing their tongues because they're in so much pain from the first four bowls. Are they going to change? Look at the next verse. Verse 11. They blaspheme God of heaven because of their pain. They didn't say, God, help me with my pain. They cursed God because of what he was doing to them and their sores. And read the rest of that verse. They did not repent. They didn't repent. We're talking about a group of people here that's done, and they're not going to repent. They're of Satan, for Satan, and going to, be with Satan the rest of their life. But it tells us right there in verse 11, they didn't repent. Even after all this stuff, they did not repent. And then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its waters. And the Euphrates was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Let me uh, bring you up to date uh, it's just like when we were talking about the mark of the beast and people were afraid living today. I'm not going to get a chip put under my hand. I'm not going to have a mark put on me anywhere, you know. Uh, it, it don't have anything to do with today, okay? It's got everything to do with the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. Uh, the same here. I heard people already talking about the Euphrates is drying up. So they say, wow, we're close to, we're close to the rapture because it's drying up well there's going to be a time and we're going to talk about it week after next about a time when a, people are going to come across that euphrates river to attack israel and not only to attack israel but to attack god with what god's doing right here here comes the armies uh, i'll list all the countries for you when we get there but the Euphrates River is going to be as dry as that highway out there. It's going to be dry. They can walk right across it. Um, an army of 200 million people. That's a, lot, that's a lot of people. Now, they're coming to fight God. You know, Israel, they're not worried about Israel, right? They're worried about this person named God that is putting all these plagues on them. And here they come. Because see, they've, uh, before the tribulation starts and somewhere during the tribulation, you got all these other, uh, Exodus uh, chapter 38 uh, tells you about these armies that are going to attack Israel. Uh, one of them's doing it right now. You know, the tribulation hasn't even started yet. So some of it can be before the tribulation. Uh, some of it can be during the tribulation. But we're at the very end. I want you to forget it. We're at the end. And when that happens, you'll find out two weeks from now, then that huge army that's going to fight the battle of Armageddon, is what we know, they come to fight God. And we already know who's going to win that war. We already know who's going to win by just speaking. We're coming back with him. That's when God is coming back to put his feet on the Mount of Olives where Jesus is. And he's going to rule for a thousand years. But that army's got to cross the Euphrates first, and it's going to be dried up. You see, the, it's like we talked about Sunday, birth pains. This Israel conflict right now is a birth pain. It's a big birth pain because it's really there, and it's really happening. People are dying, and they're having to go from house to house to try to get the people that's held hostage. 
it's a house to house thing. And now they are using the hostages as human shields. Very, it's not an easy process. That's where you need your prayers right now is to be with those people uh, that are having to go through this. But um, yes, you were right. There's nobody gonna, you know, you see where I wanted to get to? I wanted to get to those verses to talk about the ones that are left here, what they're doing, Marie. Bad as it sounds, they're blaspheming God, they're cursing God. Uh, they don't want anything to do with God. And it gets worse and worse. We can go back and we can read this book of Revelation, but chapter 16 to me is one of the most important ones because it's, it's one of the last things that's happening. I see you. <laughs> We're all looking at the baby Miss Doris. <laughs> but you see what's happening, and, and there's going to be an, another bowl poured out. We don't want to get it tonight because it's going to get in there, verse 12 to the end of the chapter, and uh, we're going to do it week after next. Uh, it takes us right on up to um, the raft, what these bowls have done, and what God's raft has been poured out. And then we're going to talk about the great harlot, and we're talking about uh, Babylon, the great is fallen. Uh, a lot of things still to happen, but it's very fast, the things that's happening. It's going to be very fast at the end. Uh, my opinion on what we were talking about a while ago and to answer Sandy's question, no. If you take the mark of the beast, you're done. You know, we've always known that. We've always believed that. Uh, sometimes you want to say, well, there's always hope if there's a breath. Well, you got to, there is today. It's, we live in a world like that today. We live in a world that the people have been given opportunity after opportunity. Brian, we preach to them every Sunday. We we preach to them on videos. We preach to them and preach to them. And they say, I don't have anything to do with that. And what do they do? They curse God too. They don't want to hear it. It's going to be worse at the end. When you talk about the mark of the beast, is that a physical mark? Yep, it's a physical mark either on your forehead or on your hand, on your right hand. Six, six, six. Oh, it's going to be the numbers? Yep. It's either going to be on, and it don't just have to be on your forehead. It can be, and we can get to that too, but it's going to be on your forehead or your right hand. You know if we were talking physical or. No, it's going to be physical, just like God's people that we marked. The 144,000 that were marked, that's a physical mark. Everybody can look at it so you don't mess with him. That's one of God's people. We don't, we don't even want anything. We don't even want to hear him. You know, we're going to close our ears. We're going to close our eyes and we're not even going to talk about it. It's, it's the way they do when they see one of God's people. The monkeys, you know, even if we don't That's right. That's right. But anyway, I know we went through that pretty quick, and I kind of want to stop right there. But I do want to read you verse 15. I'm going to jump ahead just far enough to read you. And uh, if you got a red letter edition Bible, you're going to see verse 15 in chapter 16 is Jesus himself talking. If you've got a red letter edition Bible, this is what Jesus says. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he shall walk naked and they shall see his shame. Wow, that come all the way from the book of Genesis, didn't it? What happened to Adam and Eve when they were walking, uh, God coming and uh, wanted to know where they were at. And they said, we're hiding. Why are you hiding? Because we're naked. How do you know you're naked? You know, <coughs> sin had come in. They put leaves to cover them, fig leaves. And God made them garments. But it was cover your nakedness or they will see your shame. You remember what happened to Noah? You remember Noah was naked. He got drunk, fell, fell out naked. And one of his sons come in. And the reason he got put on a back burner was because he saw his, what, his father's shame. In other words, he saw him naked. And people didn't look on each other 
in that sense because they knew it. God said, how do you know you're naked? You know, he knows all your sins, every one of them. He didn't even have to ask questions, did he? He already knew the answer. He knew what happened. Any questions or comments? We're going to stop right there uh, tonight and let me make sure I didn't leave out anything I wanted to. Okay. We're going to stop right there. What was the verse in Exodus that you mentioned? No, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 38. It wasn't a verse, it was a chapter. Uh, if you've never studied Gog and Magog, go back to Ezekiel 38 and 39 and, and read it, and it tells you all about what's going to happen to Israel. Chapter 38 and 39. Chapter 38 and 39. Or the best thing to do is get you a book that a commentary on Ezekiel 30. I'll show it to you after church. Any other questions? Comments? Woo. This side's asking all the questions except for one tonight come from this side. So y'all catching up. That's because they know it all. We're the newbies. No, uh -uh, Sandy. Sandy asked. She, well, she put me. She put my brakes on. <laughs> Jimmy, would you dismiss us, please? Jimmy.